So, a warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on the subject of uh, simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. In this lecture, we will be talking about how computer systems generate random numbers. So, in generation of random numbers, the first thing that uh, we should know is that these uh, random numbers that computers generate are not actually random, but they are pseudo random. That is, these numbers look random, they fulfill all the properties satisfied by random numbers, but they are generated deterministically using some equation. So, yeah, they are generated deterministically using some equation and uh, the first random generated number is called the seed. So, this is the first This is the first randomly generated number, the seed and these numbers are generated as a sequence with the nth random number being given as this. So, this is the nth randomly generated number. So, these a, c, and m are system generated constants. So, x n is nothing but a x n minus 1 plus c mod m. You do this and x n divided by m since x n naturally x n will naturally be less than n. Therefore, 0 is less than equal to strictly less than 1. So, this is the nth random number and subject to suitable choices of a, c and m, we can get a sequence that looks like iid u01. So, the suitable choices of uh, a, c and m, you can look up on the internet because uh, every program, every piece of software that generates random number has its own choices of a, c and m. So, we would not uh, specify those choices here, but uh, subject to suitable choices for a, c and m, we can get a sequence that uh, looks like iid u01 because we are this is the first time we are using these terms so iid i believe i should clarify iid independent and curly independent identically distributed and u 0 1 is uniform random variable between 0 and 1. So, I believe this is a good time to quickly reintroduce the uniform random variable. We will introduce the random variables as we go on rather than using special lectures for them. So, this is a good time to introduce a uniform random variable. So, let me do that quickly. So, standard uniform random variable denoted by u01. So, we are talking about the standard uniform random variable u01. So, the probability density function of u01 f x of x equals 1 0 less than equal to x less than 1 and 0 CDF is 0 x less than 0 x is 
x if 0 is less than equal to x less than equal to 1 and 1 x this these are the PDF and the CDF the expected value is half fine. So, a uniform random variable basically means that uh, it takes any value between 0 and 1. So, there are a lot of other properties that uh, we would not talk about. So, this is the uniform random variable and MATLAB you can generate a uniform random variable using the rand command and uh, unless specified MATLAB uses system time as the seed. So, let us look at before we implement this let us look at system time is. So, this is from Wikipedia. So, th this is uh, what Wikipedia says about system time I will just read this out aloud and explain the terms if needed. So, system time is measured by the system clock which is typically implemented as a simple count of the number of ticks that have transpired since some arbitrary starting date called the epoch. This system time is the time in seconds since 1st January 1970 universal time that is uh, GMT with the exception of leap seconds systems that uh, so windows uses this as system time and uh, at times it starts at year month date hour since this. So, let us uh, use these commands in MATLAB and see what happens. So, MATLAB is open thankfully and so I just ask MATLAB to tell me the time. So, this will return the system time. So, the time commands can be cut from this video yes. So, I will uh, use MATLAB to generate random. So, let us first look at how random works. So, help rand the inbuilt MATLAB help is uh, quite useful. So, so yes uh, this is we generate random. So, I just expand this to full screen. So, uniformly distributed pseudo random numbers. So, rand and returns an n by n matrix containing pseudo random values drawn from the standard uniform distribution on the open interval this rand m n returns the m by n matrix and uh, you can uh, use this. So, rng so there is also rng so help another random number generator. So, restores the settings of the random number generator used by back to the values captured previously. So, this is uh, rng is for recreating MATLAB we would not uh, use rng directly. So, rand so gives you a random number gives you another random number rand 10 gives you a 10 by 10 matrix of random numbers rand 1 comma 10 gives you a row vector containing random elements obviously you want a column vector you can go this you can also create multi dimensional uniform random arrays using this and so this is how MATLAB random number generator works. So, we next look at a slightly more complicated example in MATLAB. So, I have uh, put the code here, but uh, we look at uh, the second example or uh, we will look at the MATLAB command rand i first. So, in order to do that let us explain the MATLAB command rand i first and then let us do that. So, let us look at rand i. So, how, what does rand i do? So, the MATLAB command rand i this is our first example. So, the command rand i generates pseudo random integers from a uniform discrete distribution and uh, this returns an n by n matrix containing pseudo random integer values in this. So, the format we will use is this i min i max an array containing integer values drawn from discrete uniform distribution between i min and i max. So, say rand i say 5. I will look at the help again. So, this is on 1 to i max random integers from 1 to i max. So, 2 will generate a random integer between 1 and 2. So, rand i 2 comma So, you can see 
if I try to do this I get a 100 cross 1 vector of uh, 1 and 2. So, uh, 1s and 2s. So, I can do uh, this, but say I want randomly generated zeros and 1s. I can, can I do that? Yes, I can do that or I can generate random integers between minus 1, 0 and 1. So, this specifies the range. So, you can generate random integers between minus 1 and 1 using this. So, now the question is can I use these things to simulate something practical? The answer is yes, I can do that. So, let us try to simulate or let us use our knowledge to simulate the toss of a coin. So, in order to do that, let us use rand i to simulate the toss of a coin. So, what do we want to do? So, let x, so here is the code, let me first try to explain the logic and then uh, we will look at the code. So, let us try to use rand i to simulate the toss of a coin. So, x is a random variable that takes a value 0 when the outcome is a head sorry is a tail and 1 when it is a so, x is a random variable that takes value 1 when it the outcome is a head and 0 when it is a tail. So, we choose basically rand i 0 1 can rand i 0 1 can do this. Now, want to simulate n tosses. We want to simulate n tosses of this coin. So, and I 0, 1, 1. So, an array contain tosses generated. this would contain n tosses generated randomly. So, let us do that. So, say 0, 1, x. So, x is 1000 comma 1 vector or a length 1000 vector that contains zeros and 1s. So, we want to find the number of heads in this case. So, how do we find the number of heads? So, since this is uh, a head is represented by a 1 and a tails is represented by a 0, the sum of this column vector will be the number of heads. So, sum of x is the number of heads. So, in this set of experiments we get 507 heads. So, I repeat this. 516 heads. I can repeat this n number of times and each time the number of heads will be different. So, I have run this code earlier and uh, you can use this f1 and f2 and plot. So, you can implement this using any of these two scripts that are shown on your screen and for a thousand tosses. So, you define x, you initialize x and uh, so, there are two approaches that we use here for uh, simulating this. So, we first, so this approach uses an initialization and then we allot random values usually to each array element. This code can easily be ported to python without thinking much. F1 we 
define as that uh, the first entry we define as that the number of zeros is the tosses minus the sum of x which is natural and the second entry is the sum of x. So, if we plot stem 0 1 f this we get this and similarly the second approach directly define x as a random vector that is all. So, we in the second approach we directly define x as a random vector. So, in this experiment what we have done is or in this class what we have done is we have defined the significance of random numbers in MATLAB, we have looked at the significance of random numbers in MATLAB, we have defined the uniform distribution and we have looked at the rand command and the randi command and we have used the randi command to simulate the tosses of a coin. In the next lecture we will briefly look at how to simulate the rolls of a die using the randi command, thank you.